Among the many manufacturers that would locate in bustling Springfield in the early 1900s was a businessman and industrialist named Burton Westcott, who decided to make automobiles and to build a home with his wife, Orpha. So uh, Burton and Orpha and their daughter, Jean, moved to Springfield in 1903. Orpha was expecting their second child, who would be John Westcott, their son. They lived in several different houses. Eventually, they lived up in part of that fashionable area on East High Street. East High Street was the place to be, a street the locals described as Millionaire's Row. This was a showplace of elaborate mansions, architecturally traditional, and visually complex homes that proclaimed business success and social status. But the Westcott's home would be controversial and dramatically different. This, this was not European. This was something totally different. Well, the independent businessman of the Midwest was, he was for the United States. I mean, this was, and they were very progressive in that era, 1880, 1890, 1900, very progressive. And uh, they wanted something new, something democratic, something which had the spirit of what they were about in this country. And my grandfather's architecture was what attracted them. That was what they wanted to have. Burton Westcott frequently traveled to Chicago for business. Chicago, near where Frank Lloyd Wright had his architectural practice. And on these trips, Burton was often accompanied by his wife, Orpha. We know very little about Orpha. So far, we don't have a photograph. She is, in some ways, the mystery woman. There are stories around that she was the inspiration for getting Frank Lloyd Wright. She was herself progressive, interested in new ideas and different kinds of things, interested in the arts. There's no question they had Chicago connections, and their business connections undoubtedly included a lot of Chicago contacts, and we know that several of their associates in Springfield had very close Chicago contacts. So it's easy to imagine that someone recommended Frank Lloyd Wright, quite possible. Uh, it's also quite possible that the way they came up with Frank Lloyd Wright was a little more mundane. By the time the Westcotts would have signed an agreement with him, Frank Lloyd Wright had written at least two pieces for the Ladies' Home Journal. It's quite possible they simply read about Frank Lloyd Wright in the Ladies' Home Journal and thought, this looks interesting. The house would be sited at the top of a hill on a narrow lot amidst the dignified homes of other prominent businessmen in the area. It would take two years to build the house. As usual with Frank Lloyd Wright projects, over that period, the building would have its share of local critics. <laughs> 